When it comes to escape room marketing, most escape room owners start with Google Ads. And in the last five years, like since 2018, I've audited more than 100 plus escape room Google Ads accounts. And I see these three common mistakes in all the accounts. And that's the reason I thought I should make this video so it helps everybody out there. So without much further ado, let's get into the three Google Ads mistakes that most escape room owners make. Starting with the first mistake and that is account structure. Most of the times when I get into such accounts, I see this very common mistake. It's usually that the uh, escape room owner or whoever set up the Google Ads account has just created one single campaign and made one single ad group and dumped a bunch of keywords into that you know ad group like you know hundreds of keywords inside one single ad group and they probably just have it pointing to their home page. And this my friends is one of the biggest mistakes that most escape room owners are making. You'd actually have a better shot at throwing that money into a slot machine than trying to put it inside your Google Ads account. As a consultant and service provider in this space, you know, most of the times I actually try to hide the fact that, you know, when I get into a Google Ads campaign for like, let's say an escape room, I'm just going to go in and clean a bunch of things up and give a little bit more structure to the account and it starts to get crazy results. I had this client come to me and they're like spending around $1,500 in Google ad spend every month and they're getting a decent ad spend of like 4x returns from their uh, Google ads account. However, they felt that, you know, they could do a lot more and they came to us. We just restructured the Google ads account a little bit and created better campaign structures with different ad groups and, you know, multiple ad copies that we tested. And within the next six months, they went from a 4x return in ad spend to a 17x return in Google ad spend with the same amount of budget without increasing a single cent more on the Google ads account. So I cannot stress enough that if you want to grow your escape room business and you're going to be using Google ads as a platform to acquire customers, it's very important to start with a detailed account structure. You know, most people feel that there's some sort of a magic pill or like a magic formula that really just, you know, works and suddenly, uh, you know, some people will come in and press a few buttons and magically your account will start, you know, performing better. But there is no magic formula. And this is the magic formula. You know, having a better account structure is the magic formula. It's just like any other trade, you know, like think of it like being a painter or like, a, you know, a scientist or a doctor, you know, you go in and you start doing these things sequentially and you gradually start improving over time. And having the account structure set up correctly will allow you to have the foundation to keep scaling your ads without being constantly worried that your ad account will not perform. I'm especially very picky about these things. So when I get into a Google Ads account and I see a bunch of things that are not being used properly, I'll just go in and start deleting a bunch of things, all the old campings, all the different keywords that are not being used all the site links and all the extensions that have just been created and are just lying around in ad hoc and random. I'll go around pruning the entire account and trying to make it like a safe space that is less clutter and just more organized. So it gives clarity not only to you, but it also helps you perform, you know, get the performance of the ad account improved over time. What you could be doing is you could have a campaign for, you know, escape rooms near me. You could have a campaign for escape rooms in, in the city. You could have a campaign that's targeting families. You could have contextual targeting campaigns. You could have behavioral targeting campaigns. You could have different campaign types based on what Google ads gives you. And you got to test all these different things out. Why are different campaigns splitting your budget up in an efficient manner, which will allow you to start testing all the different things and seeing what is actually working and what's not working and where and which campaigns you should be spending more money. And that will allow you to cut down on the wasted ad spend and give allow you to start allocating more budgets to the campaigns ad groups on the ad sets that are actually performing and bringing in the money for you so this as you can see is a typical google ads account structure that you would follow having a campaign under the campaign you have different ad groups that are you know you're maybe testing different landing pages or maybe testing different like context or behavior of customers and you, in, inside every single ad group, you can have different ad copies that are geared towards a specific campaign uh, ad group that you're running. And similarly, you can have a second campaign with different ad groups and each ad group will have multiple ad copies that you're testing against each other to see which one's actually performing better than the other one. So now that we've covered the first mistake that most escape room owners are making with the Google ads, let's proceed to the second mistake and that is budget management. Again, this also stems from the same fact that, you know, having a single campaign was just putting in all the keywords and throwing in everything in that campaign and putting in all the budget without really testing it is not going to get you anywhere. This is what will dif differentiate a novice media buyer from a professional media buyer. 
a, when a professional media buyer actually enters an ad account, what they'll be doing is they'll be understanding your constraints. So you have a, you have a budget that you want to use and you want to be profitable by the end of that spend. So ideally to be able to reach that, what you should be doing is ideally to be able to reach the profitable spend by the end of exhausting the budget, you should be spending your money in four different phases. And that is, let's say, for example, you have a thousand dollar budget, then you should be allocating $20 uh, 20 percent or $200 to the test phase. And then there's a verify phase where you want to make sure that what you're testing is not a flu. Let's say you ran the campaigns for a week and you spent like 200 bucks and you got a bunch of bookings and you think that, okay, this is like a sure shot winner. But what actually ended up happening is you ran the campaigns during a weekend where you got a lot of sales, but during weekdays, you're not getting any sales. So you want to make sure that once you test and you get some results, you want to verify. Now, if you run a campaign and you do a test and the test fails, what do you do? You don't go to the verify stage. You actually allocate more money to the test phase because at the end of the day, the test phase is supposed to tell you what is going to work for you. Getting a positive signal from Google ads in based on actually the final metric that makes the most difference to your business and that is purchases. Once you start getting purchases from a campaign, you've completed the test phase and you know that this campaign is getting in results, but you want to be able to verify that in the next phase and you spend $200 more to verify and make sure that it was not, it was not a fluke and you have tangible results that are proven that yes, this campaign is actually working over an extended period of time. And once you cross the verify phase, you then start optimizing the campaign with another 20% budget. And beyond the optimized phase, let's say, once you're completely confident that this campaign is actually working for you, you slowly start increasing your budget and you'd go to, let's say, a 40%, uh, you allocate 40% of your budget to the scale phase and you start getting better results, right? So this, these phases could be done over an extended period of time. It could happen in a month. It could happen in three months, depending on the size, competition, structure, the geographic location, the kind of demographics that you're targeting, all of that. So let's say uh, uh, in, a, in a typical scenario, it could be that in the first month, you're doing the test phase and you're just doing the test phase. And second month would be about verifying and optimizing the ad campaigns. And third month could be about scaling. In most of the typical scenarios, we actually ask our clients to give us like a friendly, no contract, three month commitment for us to be able to run their ad campaigns profitably and get them to a place where they're getting decent returns from the Google Ads account. And actually, as part of our offering to escape rooms, what we actually give as a guarantee is if you don't reach a profitable spend of 6x returns in the next three months of running the ad campaigns, then we return all the retainers that you've paid back to us. That is a second mistake, making sure that you allocate your budget in the four different phases and you understand that you're going to be using this budget in an efficient manner as if your life really depended on it. So don't just use that money and just spend it thinking that you have more and more money that you could keep allocating. If you have that mindset when you're getting into a Google Ads account, then what's going to happen is you're going to end up making a bunch of expensive mistakes and not having a lot of takeaways from the mistakes, which would confine you from actually making better decisions. So keep in mind that budget management is extremely important. So moving over to the third mistake that most people make, and that is not being able to differentiate media planning from media buying. Most people will just quickly get into a Google Ads account, do a little bit of keyword research with Google Keyword Planner, put some keywords in, write some ads, create some kind of campaign structure and just throw everything inside and run it and say, phew, I'm done and I'll just come back in a month and I'll see some you know, money in my bank. And that's not how it works. You, before you actually get into a Google Ads campaign, what you really need to do is you need to do media planning. You want to understand what your ideal customers are, who your target segment is. And hopefully if you started an escape room business and created a proper business plan, then you've done some market research and you already have a little bit of data around what the key demographics would be. Typically they are ranging around, you know, uh, young adults, two people with, you know, children anywhere between the age of 25 to 44. That's where the sweet spot is for escape room owners in most places. And you do this research, you make sure that you start out with some sort of a plan, you know, understand what their behaviors are, what are kind of places they are going and things like that to be able to create a strategy that sits outside of your Google Ads account. All right. So in this case, you know, we, uh, we are taking a look at uh, this uh, media planning phase of an escape room in Antarctica. And we just created this entire structure that tells us 
this is the budget that we have and this is how we're going to be breaking it in the different campaigns that we'll be running so let me see if i can actually pull over an actual performer for you so this as you can see is actually a way of trying to plan the media media buying before you're running into the google ads account right we're, we're writing all the different campaigns that we are going to be doing what is the radius going to be what is the daily budget that that we're going to be spending what are the different segments that we're going to be using and stuff like that you know the site links would be planned here the, all the different ad copies and you know uh, the headlines and descriptions and all of that would be planned outside of the google ads account because what happens is when you're inside a google ads account and you're trying to do things you're going to be doing it in a hurry because you know the, you can you cannot save it and it's going to it, it confines you to having to complete the work immediately and limits your creativity so when you do it outside the Google Ads account, it's a safe place where you can keep, you know, where, where you can, if, even if you make some mistakes, it's not going to really cost you a lot. And eventually, you're going to end up having a much better detailed, more research and a much more sure uh, structure and ad campaign that you would be confident about actually putting inside your Google Ads account. All right. So doing the media planning, then proceeding to the media buying. Now, when, when the media buying starts, you actually put everything inside your Google Ads account and then you're seeing how the campaigns are performing, which campaign is getting you better results, you know, if this campaign particularly is getting you a better cost per purchase, or is this campaign getting you a better cost per purchase, or how many purchases are actually coming in from a different campaigns, and what kind of a return on ad spend are you getting at the end of the day. So let me just zoom into this uh, screen. So as, as we can see here that we have five different campaigns running, you spend uh, this money, this is the conversion value of the campaigns and these are the amount of purchases that have come in from the different campaigns, right? So based on that, this allows us to start making smarter decisions around which campaign should be scaled, which campaign should be allocated lesser budgets. So as you can see, this particular campaign was allocated much lesser budget than this particular campaign that spent like $7,000 dollars and got 11x return on ad spend this particular campaign uh, spent like two thousand dollars and got a 52x return on ad spend so different campaigns would have different budgets and limits and some campaigns you might try to increase the budget later on and see that it's getting throttled that means you know if you try to increase the budget more it's not going to get you better results so you kind of hit a point of diminishing returns in those campaigns and you decide to you know cut it short there and you know that scaling that particular campaign beyond that point wouldn't be possible so you start allocating money to different places if you have extra budget in your marketing to different campaigns so that you're going to get in front of newer people and start bringing additional customers that wouldn't necessarily see your business right so this is the way these are the three mistakes that most escape room owners are making when they're actually running the google ads accounts account structure budget management and understanding the difference between media planning and media buying so hopefully you guys got some value from this video if you have any confusions or questions you can leave a comment below and i'd be happy to answer it and also as an fyi i'm Piyush and i'm the founder of seo Orp, and we work with a lot of escape room owners from around the world we have clients in five continents and over seven countries and we are constantly in the zone in the battlefront trying to understand the next best strategies for our clients and replicating the things that are uh, you know, giving us success across the board for all our clients and bringing better results. You can go to vault.seoorp.com. This is a VIP vault that we have and click on location based entertainment. And when you click on this, you will see that we have a bunch of resources that are available for escape room owners. Some are paid, some are free. But if you're watching this video, you can write a code that's called engage 100 e n g a g e 100 engage 100 for any of these resources even the paid ones and you'll get it for free so you know, we have stuff related to google ads revealing some of the best strategies that we have used in our google ads campaigns to get insane amounts of results for our clients there's a blog topic generator for escape rooms there's a cost per player acquisition calculator that we use for all the clients that we acquire to understand what's a healthy cost per acquisition for their business there's ultimate escape room marketing playbook there's a growth acceleration framework that we've not only used for our clients but we also use for our own business to grow our business to by multiple uh, levels there's a definitive guide to seo for escape rooms the 35 point checklist of a high converting escape room website the ultimate collection of thousand google and facebook ads for escape rooms website tools that we constantly recommend to our clients and also use in our agency to serve our clients if you want you can drop onto a free consultation call with me and i guarantee to you 
that this 45 minute call is going to be the best free 45 minute consultation call that you will ever have around your escape room business. So that's it folks, I'll catch you in the next video.